Hello, hello, and welcome back to a very special Blocktober edition of the show. I know it's uh, rather late, it's been a busy month, but I thought we'd touch on something that's existed in gaming since the very beginning, since the start of 3D gaming, and that is BSP geometry and uh, level blockouts and that kind of thing. So uh, before, I guess before we start, a little explanation. So BSP is just a way to generate geometry without using uh, polygons, without using a static mesh of any sort. Uh, we'll see more once we get started. So let's just go up here to file and we'll make ourselves a new level. Let's go for the default, the regular blank one, and we'll delete this, uh, this floor mesh here. Everything else can stay. So to be able to use uh, BSP geometry, we want to go up here to modes and uh, down here to geometry. And here we have just a, just a few little things uh, like box, cone, cylinder, some stairs, spheres. Let's just drag in the box first and we'll uh, have a quick look at how this works. So as you can see, it's just eight points, some edges, and it generates faces, you know, in between those, in between those points. If we move around uh, this box, you can see the box itself doesn't move. It just moves the points and then regenerates uh, the faces as it, you know, when you, when you, when you let go. This is good because it allows you to very, very quickly uh, sort of block out a level, hence the, hence the name, and have a look at how the lighting is going to interact with it and get a, get a feel for the shapes and the scales and that kind of thing. And you can experiment with different level designs and uh, all of that sort of old school good stuff. I mean, this is the method that they used to make a lot of the maps in uh, like Quake, uh, Unreal Tournament back in the day. It's a common method, but of course, like we, we live in a different age now. You probably shouldn't be using BSPs in your final game project. It's just a way for you to quickly iterate and generate a level and be able to, to get a feel for, for lighting and space and that kind of thing. So with our little box here selected, let's go over to details and we're gonna have a look at what we can do with a BSP shape. So a BSP shape is called a brush. Uh, over here we have brush settings and it's uh, currently set to additive over here on the side. If we bring this down, we have either additive or subtractive. This will affect uh, whether it's generating uh, geometry or subtracting uh, geometry from other BSP brushes. And uh, some shapes here, we can change to any other shapes right here in the menu and also set the dimensions. So uh, one thing to keep in mind here is you can see the world grid material, which by default is on the side of our, or on, on each of the faces of our shape here. If we just simply uh, go to scale and stretch this out, you can see that it's warping our uh, our material here. And this is going to affect uh, like when we bake shadows on it, uh, that kind of thing, and it's not ideal. I mean, we could put a material on it that uh, scales and stretches our UVs, but it's not perfect. The focus here is to be as quick as possible. So instead, what we want to do is just come over here in our uh, brush shapes here in our dimensions, and we'll just drag out, say, the Y, and we can see here that it gets us a, a nice uh, tiny material just like that. So I'd encourage you to, to give this a go, to just play around with some shapes here. In fact, let's uh, we'll reset this back to normal. Uh, we'll set this back to our origin points. We can see a little player start here is sitting right there on top. Let's reduce our Z value down to 10, make it a 10 centimeter uh, little floor there, and we'll stretch this out. We'll say a thousand and a thousand and get ourselves a nice floor. And we'll just double check that our player start there is going to be sitting nicely on our on our floor there. And if we play this in our selected viewport, oh, uh, well, obviously with our, with our uh, game mode set. So let's just get our, well, we'll get the third person game mode, hit play, and then we have our mannequin. We have a little floor that we can run around on. So collision is generated automatically and here we have the most basic of shapes that we can create in Unreal Engine, in our game world here. So let's just hit escape on that and we'll go back to our shape here, go back to our details panel. So as you can see, I've got just one face of our uh, BSP brush selected and we can select each face one at a time, just like that. Or if we go to our outliner, we can select the whole brush and uh, affect settings on it that way. This is because if you set a face here, you can put your materials on it. Uh, you can affect things such as the lighting, uh, surface properties. We can move around the UVs and that kind of thing. Uh, rotate some stuff. We can rotate our textures. That's pretty cool. Uh, the important part here, though, is the light map resolution. As opposed to static meshes, where the light map resolution refers to the resolution of the, the texture that we generate the light map on, it works in the opposite way for our uh, BSP brush. The light map resolution is going to be affecting uh, the smallest little component size of our uh, of our brush. So we want this number to be as low as possible. But just like with our regular light maps, the lower the number, or rather the, the more densely the, the light map, the longer it's going to take uh, to generate when we eventually do generate lighting. 
So uh, that pretty much covers the basics. Uh, we can do some other things too. Let's go back to our uh, brushes here. If we get the stairs, I'll drop the stairs in. So this has just generated us some stairs. And if we go to the details now, uh, we take note of where the pivot point has been generated so that we can properly, properly orient some things. So remember that we still don't want to be scaling BSP brushes. We just want to be positioning them and then manipulating the values here. So we have our step height, uh, which we can increase. Step length, make it a bit more shallow. Our width, obviously changes the width and the number of steps so we can stack it up and create uh, create anything that we need. We can even uh, set the uh, add to first step, which will be the distance below our first step. So we can sort of raise up raise up our floor level a little bit like that if we want to adjust certain height values and that kind of thing. And this is very similar for our curb stairs. So our curb stairs work in very much the same way, although we have our, our radius so we can make them wider. Uh, where's our angular curve? So we can shallow them out or make it longer, number of steps, obviously just like that. It's the, the, mo the most basic of ways to generate geometry uh, inside Unreal Engine. And then when you're ready, you can just generate your light as normal. And then uh, it was in our outliner here, you'll probably see some uh, fairly dodgy results if you don't affect the uh, light map resolution, which can get quite tedious. If you've got, for example, the stairs here, you have to do this per face. So uh, keep that in mind, unless there's some sort of keyboard hotkey that I'm not familiar with. But I mean, that's the way that I've just had to put up and, and, and deal with it. Again, like the BSP stage is just for simple block outs. It's supposed to be very fast. You're supposed to be iterating very quickly and then moving on to replacing these meshes, or the, these brushes with your static meshes later on. Speaking of, because it's Blocktober and the point of Blocktober is sort of in contrast to Inktober, which uh, traditional 2D artists use as, as an excuse to just pick up a pen, sketch some stuff once every day and uh, you know, sort of brush up on the fundamentals. And that's exactly what Blocktober is all about. It's just brushing up on fundamentals and blocking out a level. You know, I've uh, been a bit busy this month, but I've gone and made myself a block out map. And here it is. So my inspiration for this was traditional Unreal Tournament style capture the flag maps, but on a smaller scale. I wanted sort of one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -on -two kind of design. And uh, I just basically just went for it. So we have some cylinder, uh, some cylinder brushes here set to just uh, just eight or ten sides uh, connected with stairs and uh, I should mention the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of thing is to snap to grid as well so you get some nice matching edges and that kind of thing everything's nice and and meeting up without any or as little overlap as possible that kind of thing uh, what else have I done here so I've got some nice volumetric lighting obviously set with the uh, with the exponential height fog component the skylight is also working wonders in here by you know, lightening up those most darkest of areas. In fact, with our scalar selector, let's just set this to movable. And let's blown out a bit. So we'll put that back to one. And we can make it a bit more, bit more sort of playable here. So uh, let's see, uh, problems. Well, for one, let's uh, let's be really critical because that's what block is about. Uh, we got here, well, it's very flat. It's very uninteresting. There's not a lot of elevation. It's very, very simple. This would be a boring map to play. There's also not much cover. So if it was a first person shooter, you're pretty vulnerable no matter where where you're really sitting. Uh, I do like this uh, this area here though, this little almost it's almost like the quake logo I guess uh, in the in the wall here created some uh, some windows here for the light to come through. Opened up the ceiling a bit too to let some more light in. I was always picturing a uh, like a capture the flag flag sitting on on these ends so I wanted the light to come down through the roof to accentuate that and I think that looks quite quite effective. It also gave me some opportunities to see, uh, for example, some um, some other issues. Like if we get right back here, we can see that over on the other end, we're a bit obscured by the fog. Maybe if this was a an actual map, we wouldn't want that. We want it to be a bit more, you know, a bit more clear, a bit more open. Uh, this ceiling brush here is very thin. I'm uh, not particularly happy with that. Uh, but here we can also see how the subtractive brushes work. If I go up here to modes and get a, where are we, geometry, get a box. If I intersect this box with the ceiling, go to details and set it to subtractive, you can see that instead of creating geometry, it's going to subtract its own dimensions from the geometry that it intersects. So that's how we achieve this kind of these kind of shapes, uh, these kind of shapes here, like the the big hole in the ceiling and that kind of thing. 
And that's more or less all there is to BSP modeling. It's a very simple project a process. It's designed to be, you know, designed to be quick, designed to be simple. I'd change my lighting a bit here. It's easy to get distracted to, you know, because it's quite uh, quite fun to be playing around in this kind of this kind of environment. I think I've broken my skylight somehow. <laughs> that's okay, I'll uh, rebuild lighting at some point. And uh, that's the other thing too. So with oh my shadows are all gone. When do they disappear? Okay, I just reloaded it. Apparently the engine killed all my shadows. <laughs> that's alright. It's only supposed to be for temporary uh, sort of looking at looking at basic shapes and layouts and that kind of thing. And you can see like there are there are lighting problems, probably faces that are missed and gaps in the in the geometry that you want to be patching up. Uh, it could also be do be due to the uh, you know the light map resolution of each face, that kind of thing. But you get a decent feel for the kind of space that you want to be creating. You know, so I might iterate on this some more and uh, revisit this video maybe in a, in a in a week or two or maybe next October. Who knows? But if you yourself would like to download this map and see if you can improve on my original concept, I'll upload it to my Mediafire account and leave a download link for you guys in the description. You can play around with all the different toys, like the uh, the volumetric fog, the skylight. In fact, if we grab the post-process volume here, you can play around with things like depth of field, ambient occlusion, all in the details here. I like using the search bar to find this kind of thing. So we've got our intensity and radius. We can affect uh, affect all of these different uh, different features, and then you know replace the brushes with your own statics if you if you have the models or you like you're into modular design or level design in general. And furthermore, if you're into level design and that kind of thing, I'll also leave a link to a world of level design project called the Corridor, which goes through an entire you know BSP to final render workflow for uh, you know for for a simple. Um, simple UE4 scene. If you're into level design and that kind of thing, it's an absolute must watch. I'll uh, leave a link to that in the description. It's a bit of cash, but I think it's worth it. So be sure to check that out. I know it's a bit of a quicker video this time, guys, but there is more to come in the future. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.